Juniper Sky Enterprise is a cloud-based management service designed to abstract, simplify, and hide network complexity. As a cloud-based service, Juniper Sky Enterprise reduces network administration costs by eliminating software maintenance cycles and dedicated network management infrastructure. A centralized and user-friendly portal makes Juniper Sky Enterprise the solution for IT teams of all sizes and experience levels. It helps keep networks up and running securely with minimal effort and cost. In this video, we will see a short demo of Juniper Sky Enterprise. The demo will show how to onboard and manage branch office network devices like SRX secure routers and EX switches. The first step in deploying a remote branch office is to onboard the devices. In this demo, we will show how to onboard an SRX device without the need for a certified network engineer on site. The devices get shipped to the branch office site. The local personnel at the site will rack and power up the devices and connect cables based on the cabling diagram. When the SRX is powered up in factory default state, it reaches out to redirect.juniper.net automatically using the 4G LTE connection. The redirect service will redirect the device request to Sky Enterprise portal. Sky Enterprise will verify the serial number of the device and alert the Sky Enterprise administrator about the new device waiting for authorization. Once authorized by the Sky Enterprise administrator, configuration specific to this serial number will be pushed down to the device. Let us take a quick look at our SRX device to see if it is in the factory default state and if it is trying to phone home to redirect.juniper.net. Please note that in real-life deployments, you do not have to log in to the SRX CLI to perform this step. We are logging into the SRX to demonstrate the ZTP process. Here you can see that the SRX factory default configuration has the necessary information to reach redirect.juniper.net. We can also see that the 4G LTE connection is active on the SRX and the device can reach the internet to phone home to the redirect service. Let us now look at the steps that should be performed by the Sky Enterprise Administrator for zero-touch provisioning of an SRX device. In most branch office deployments, a majority of the configuration is common. So we can use templates to define the configuration that gets pushed down to an SRX device in any branch office. Here, we have already defined a template that we will use for this deployment. Let us look at some of the details of the template. Although most of the configuration in the branch SRX will be the same for a given organization, there will be parts of the configuration that are unique to each branch office. For example, the Internet IP address and gateway address of the primary Internet connection, or the pre-shared keys for the IPsec tunnel to AWS VGW. You can parameterize these specific variables and provide unique values when the SRX for a given branch is onboarded. You would have noticed that the ZTP template is using the XML format for the device configuration. You can easily obtain the XML format of device configuration from a Juniper device. If you have an existing SRX that is being used in a branch office, you can obtain the configuration in XML format that can then be used as a template. Now that we have a branch office template for this enterprise, let us see how to automatically provision an SRX in one of the branches using this template. Click on Devices and Add Device. Provide a name for this device being onboarded. Select the type of device and check Create ZTP Device checkbox. You will be prompted to provide the serial number of the device that is being onboarded. As a Sky Enterprise Administrator, you either have the serial number of the device that was shipped to the branch site, or the local personnel who rack the device captures the serial number and sends it to you. We can now use the template that we showed earlier for configuring this box. As I said earlier, there will be some parameters that will be unique to this SRX device. You can provide specific values for those parameters, like primary internet IP, gateway address, AWS IPsec tunnel parameters, etc. Click on Create Device button after providing all the information. This will generate a pop-up that shows the configuration that will be pushed by Sky Enterprise to the device to ensure that it knows how to self-register with Sky Enterprise. You can close this window. 
As a Sky Enterprise Administrator, you will receive an email alert when the device reaches out for ZTP. You authorize the ZTP process for this device because you are aware of the new device being onboarded with this serial number. At this point, Sky Enterprise will push down the configuration for this SRX. After a few minutes, you can verify that the device has the new configuration pushed down from Sky Enterprise. Here you can see that the device now has a new internet connection through the primary internet instead of the 4G LTE connection. You can also verify that the device has necessary information to self-register with Sky Enterprise for management. Here you can see that the device has the configuration required to connect to AWS VGW to establish IPsec connections and also verify that the IPsec tunnels are active. You can verify a few other things like VLANs and security zones and layer 3 interfaces are configured. Finally, you can see that the device self-registered on the Sky Enterprise portal for management and the device is online. As you can see, with the Sky Enterprise ZTP process, a branch office device can be onboarded without a certified network engineer on site to configure the device through the CLI. As part of this new branch office deployment demo, we will now see how to manually onboard a device instead of using the ZTP process. We will use the EX2300 switch to show this. Sky Enterprise will generate config snippet that you can copy and manually paste on the EX2300 CLI. Click on Add Device and provide the requested information, like name of the device and device type. Click on Create Device. This will generate a pop-up that shows the config snippet that should be copied and pasted the device. Verify the config changes and commit the configuration on the EX2300. The device will now establish TCP connections to Sky Enterprise, and after a few minutes, you can verify that the device is now online and can be managed from Sky Enterprise. At this point, the branch office devices are onboarded to the Sky Enterprise portal. We can group these devices into a single branch office site. Click on Sites and Add a Site. Provide information about the site, like name of the site and location of the site. You can select the devices that should be part of this site. In this case, we only have two devices, and both the devices will be part of this site. Once the site and devices are mapped, you can get a quick view of the status of the branch site in the Sites view. You can get high-level information, like number of devices in the site and the state of these devices. You can also get summary information about the number of alarms and the severity of these alarms. Sky Enterprise also supports the concept of device tags. You can assign one or more tags to devices. Tags can be used to group devices either for easy searching or for performing common tasks across devices in a group. For example, you can use tags for bulk software updates or bulk config changes. In this example, we are using three tags. The first tag is L2 switches tag. We will assign this tag to all switches in our deployment across branches. In this case, we have only one switch. The second tag is firewalls tag. We will assign this tag to all firewalls in our deployment across branches. In this case, we have only one firewall. The third tag is belong to Bob tag. We will assign this tag to all our devices. These tags can now be used to easily search for a group of devices. You can also use these tags to make bulk config changes across devices. In this example, we are configuring a new name server across all of Bob's devices. You can configure this in the bulk config changes section and select the belong to Bob tag as device assignment. This will push the configuration to all devices that have the belong to Bob tag. Similarly, you can use device tags to push software upgrades to multiple devices. For example, here you can push a software upgrade to all devices with tag Firewalls. Now that we have onboarded our devices and grouped them based on site and tags, let us see how to make some simple config changes on these devices. In this example, we will configure EX2300 switch for these two endpoints. The Windows VM is connected to port GE002 
and the wireless access point is connected to port GE000. We will configure these ports with the correct VLAN information so the AP can register itself with its cloud management platform. And the Windows VM can reach the web server hosted on AWS. Before we configure the port, let us check if the Windows VM has an IP address and if it can reach the web server hosted on AWS. Since the port on the EX switch is not configured, the Windows endpoint does not have an IP address and the endpoint cannot reach the web server. We can configure the VLAN for the switch port on Sky Enterprise. Select Configure Interfaces and VLANs in the Action menu for the EX switch. You can use filters to find the interface that needs to be configured. In the Action menu for the interface, select Create a Unit option. Configure the requested information like description, VLAN and type of interface. When you save this configuration, Sky Enterprise will push this information to the EX switch immediately. We can now verify if the Windows endpoint got an IP address in VLAN 20 and is able to reach the web server on AWS. Similarly, let us now configure port GE000 in VLAN 40, so the access point can register itself with its cloud management platform. With Sky Enterprise Arrowhive integration, you can get a summary monitoring view of Arrowhive access points and wireless endpoints. You can check the status of the Arrowhive access point that we enabled and also get details about the access point. You can also check the status of wireless endpoints connected to this access point. Sky Enterprise provides the ability to manage and monitor all your branch SRX devices from a single cloud portal. Sky Enterprise can configure security policies, zones, NAT, VPNs, IDP, UTM, and app firewall policies. In this example, we will see how to configure a simple security policy to block ICMP traffic from the Windows endpoint to the AWS web server. Go to Security Policy Information section for the SRX device. Since the Windows endpoint and the IP sec tunnel interfaces to AWS are in the Trust Zone, we will add a new security policy from Trust Zone to Trust Zone. Select the source subnet or IP address and destination address. In this case, the AWS web server. If the object is not in the address book, you can add an address book entry for the AWS web server. Provide the application traffic that should be blocked. In this case, we want to block ping from the Windows machine to the AWS web server. Save the policy. You can also reorder the policies from the Sky Enterprise portal. So this new policy is at the top. Save the changes. Now the security policy is pushed down the SRX. We can check that the Windows endpoint now cannot ping the AWS web server, but it can still access the web application on the AWS web server. Sky Enterprise provides the ability to use the popular Junos Commit Confirm feature. This feature helps avoid situations where an administrator makes a bad configuration change on a remote device that causes the device to lose connectivity. Without this feature, you will need someone on site to log into the CLI to roll back the bad config change. With Commit Confirm feature enabled, when a config change is made for a device from Sky Enterprise Portal, the device performs a commit confirm with the configured time interval. If Sky Enterprise can reach the device after the configuration change, it automatically sends a second commit to confirm that the config change did not disconnect the device. On the other hand, if the device is not reachable after the config change, Sky Enterprise cannot confirm the change, so the device rolls back the config change after the timeout interval. Hence, the bad config is discarded. Now the device should be back on the network and Sky Enterprise can manage the device again. Sky Enterprise also provides centralized cloud-based monitoring for all branch office devices. You can get a quick view of the network topology in the topology view. The topology view also provides the ability to drill down directly into monitoring details for specific interfaces. You can get a quick look at interface utilization information for key uplink interfaces from the topology view. You can also get detailed monitoring data under the Device System and Monitoring section. 
In this screen, we can see system information and also security flow sessions information for the SRX. You can get interface utilization information under the Interface Graphs tab. You can quickly check the interface utilization of a particular interface by filtering for that interface in the search box. In most branch deployments, the requirement is to monitor traffic only for important interfaces like uplink interfaces. You can configure Sky Enterprise to monitor only some important uplink interfaces. System alarms from devices are shown in Sky Enterprise. If an alarm has an associated action, you can take that action from the Sky Enterprise portal. For example, for this alarm about rescue configuration, you can configure the device to save rescue configuration directly from the alarm screen. The application and network risk reports feature in Sky Enterprise provides a detailed view of the application traffic in a given branch site. Sky Enterprise utilizes advanced security feature set of SRX devices to catalog the risks in a given branch office. The report highlights the business risks inherent in the branch office and details the threats that SRX has detected. That brings us to the end of this demo. If you need more information, please check the Sky Enterprise product page on juniper.net. Thanks for watching.